Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we're going to talk about some of my initial impressions and pros and cons of the CR30, the print mill, the belt printer from Creality. So stay tuned. All right, a few things that I like. I love the power plug being right there, easy access. The power switch is right here. Full size SD card slot, which I really like. USB C port, which I really like. It's not a color screen, but I actually prefer the non-color screen in this application. I just wanted to do what it's supposed to do, so I like that. One advantage, the 32-bit processor means this interface is not laggy. It's fast and responsive, and it does not jump. You can see how quickly that moves, and it stops right where it's supposed to. If you've used an Ender 3 or a Ender 2 or a CR10, you know this interface, this UI, could be a bit laggy. With the 32-bit processor, not so much. Print quality is good. I like this. I consider that to be pretty darn good. There are a few minor issues here. Some of them are tactical decisions. For example, could use some support here, but there's going to be a paper tube in here. I don't care about this. I'll take my, um, my deburring tool and just zip, done, and I'll put the paper tube in here once I print the other half. So I didn't want to waste the material or the 20 or 30 minutes of print time that would add to print that bit of support for that. So I don't care. I also didn't want to lower the layer height. Again, don't need to. This is inconsequential. Um, I see some artifacting a little bit there. A little bit there. This is a, uh, I, I've seen this before. This is a Cura thing. I got to figure out how to tune Cura. I'm not thrilled by that, but that's, that's Cura. That's not the printer. There's two kinds of problems here. You have mechanical issues, meaning problems with the printer, and you have um, software issues, which have nothing to do with the printer. So these are software issues. The facets are because the model was decimated when I put it in Tinkercad to edit it. I need to find a better way to edit files. I might have to break down and just put Windows 10 on the computer so I can get access to 3D Builder, which would hopefully let me make some basic changes to these models. Basically, I had to fill the model in to make it solid and then put a BT60 sized hole here. So I, could put, I want to fly this. I want to make this fly. So this is a functional print. Um, uh, these here are actually built into the model. So this this thing is welded together like a water tank. It's made in sections. That's part of the model. What's that? I got something there. A little piece of filament out of place right there. I'm not sure about that. It's probably just a... Oh, yeah. I remember seeing a little piece of filament stuck on the end of the nozzle. I was debating on reaching in there to take it off. I bet you that little piece of filament finally came off right there. <laughs> because of the 45 degrees, I didn't trust myself to go in there with pliers and pluck it off. I bet you that's exactly what that is. Overall, it's pretty nice. The 45 degrees does cause a increased aspect ratio to the layer profile. So the layers are a little more pronounced, but they are pretty consistent. Enough that I'm happy with it. I'll have to print a better quality model. This is also a... Um, a beta roll of filament so there's going to be inconsistencies in the color dyes in this filament and that's going to obviously manifest as banding uh, very minor though not a big deal I'm going to paint this model I do have a couple of issues um, I am I'm not a fan of this simple flat bracket I'd like to see this gusseted uh, this is strong this is steel I mean that's a tough bracket but I can see that joint right there, that bend right there, weakening over time. So I'd like to see them gusset this. So have a flat piece right here, completing this triangle to gusset this. Just these two pieces here. That's it. Um, everything else is constructed incredibly strongly. I mean, really, seriously strongly. Uh, the filament spool holder is a tiny bit loose. Even though it's the correct size bolts. And I believe that's because they actually made the filament spool holder thinner. And because it's thinner... The bolts are allowed to go in all the way and bottom out on the extrusion. Not a big deal, but something they should correct. I'd like to see them go back to thicker metal on the spool holder rather than using shorter bolts. Filament path is good. No complaints here. Directly into the filament sensor, directly into the extruder. I would like to see some support here. I would like to... Um, I'm going to pin this up right here. Okay. And I'd like to see a, a stiff support come out to about here to hold these two out like this. So you have a nice clean path coming out of the printer. Um, I did have an issue where my head came loose because it kept banging into the bed um, because the belt was not working properly. We'll get to that in a moment. So 
if you have some extrusion inconsistency issues where layers seem to be shifting around, your hot end probably came loose. Just pop those four screws out, tighten that bad boy up. I did put Luke's fix in here just because I don't want to mess with it. So we're going to try it out. So far it's working fine. Uh, QC on the belt needs to be improved a little bit. You can see this belt is not consistent. See how the belt's thinner down here, thicker down here. Uh, this is outside the print area, so it's not a problem there, but the belt is going to tend to bias toward one side or the other. Because this edge has a nice clean cut, I biased it on this side, because otherwise this inconsistent edge is constantly bumping up against this. And that might even be causing the one problem I am finding. So, you can see here, I have tiny little shifts every now and then. There's one there, and there's two there. I'm not 100% sure what's causing that. You can feel it, it's not quite right, so the layer got shifted. And it's weird, it looks like one layer shifted one way and the other layer shifted the other way. That would seem to indicate it could be this, where the belt, as you can see here, it's, it's getting thicker here. And if it hits that, that might cause a micro shift in the overall belt path. That could be causing that. That is a printer problem. That's not a slicer problem. So that's something they do need to address. Now, I did adjust the belt twice. That could be this, but that doesn't explain this one. Because I didn't adjust the belt again. Um, beyond that, so far, not much issues. The construction was absolutely solid. This is one of the best belt printers. They've uh, One of the best built printers they've ever released. The last time I seen a printer built this bulletproof, this over the top, you know, no corners cut, Everything is CNC'd, everything's milled, everything's put together properly. The last time I seen a printer of this caliber was the TiVo Flash. The TiVo Flash was like the kitchen sink printer. They just, they put every dollar into that to make it the perfect printer. It's not perfect, but that's what they tried to do. You know, so it was a very clean, very polished machine. I see that here in this construction. It needs improvements, but not in quality control. Except for this belt. That needs to be worked on. Um, as you can see, once it got tuned properly, bed adhesion was perfect. It's starting to come up exactly where it's supposed to as it rolls off this bed. And you see it's perfect bed adhesion all the way down. It's not lifting or pulling up anywhere. So I'm very, very pleased by that. It's a brand new way of printing, so I expect there to be some road bumps. Um, we need to figure out what's causing the banding. I'm not familiar enough with this printing style to have been able to diagnose that just yet. Um, cooling is excellent. Hot end is just your bog standard Creality hot end. I like that. Be careful trying to change nozzles. Your nozzles need to have a 45 degree or higher angle cut. Otherwise, the back side of the nozzle will hit the bed versus the tip of the nozzle. And you don't want that. So, for example, I just ordered a hardened, coated um, A2, nickel plated A2 tool steel nozzle from Micro Swiss. And I just found out it's probably not going to work. I might have to grind down one face of the nozzle in order to make it so that the if, if the nozzle needs to be like this, if the nozzle's like this, the back side of the nozzle will touch the bed instead of the tip touching the bed, and that would cause a problem, obviously. Um, mine did come with one small issue. The belt kept driving itself to the side. Couldn't figure out why until Carl, the guy who helped improve this machine, noticed that this was sticking up. So this plate is part of this, and it sits inside of a CNC, a milled channel in the extrusion. Mine was sitting up. Thankfully, it must have just shifted during shipping, because when I unscrewed all four, lifted it, and pushed it back down, it fell right into place where it was supposed to, and my belt stopped trying to bias itself toward the left. It was so bad that the belt was riding up the wheel here. And now, as you can see, it has stopped doing that. It has stayed this consistent distance the way it's supposed to for this entire print except for those little tiny micro shifts which we need to figure out obviously those shifts aren't going to affect this print but i can see that bugging people and it bugs me too because you know you spend two and a half days and 600 grams of plastic making a print yeah you, you want it to be really nice <laughs> um it's silent the core xy is excellent nice and tight big fat belts i'm very glad to see they use the big fat belts um, they, they put the kitchen sink into this, and I like it. Beyond that, I have not used it enough. So, you'll have to wait until I gain more experience with it, see if any issues crop up. I did not like the way this wire management was run from the wire that goes from here over and across, and Carl gave me the idea of having it come around the stepper and go on the bottom side of the stepper here with the little, um, 
channel that holds it in there and that's perfect now it's nowhere near the kinematics it doesn't have any chance of getting caught up in the wheel or the belt and it just comes around the back side here and plugs in so that's how i would run yours as well if you happen to get one of these that's it oh one other improvement i would like these suck come on seriously get rid of these damn things these things are so much garbage use crown bolts like that castle nut heads like that crown heads use those kind of bolts and use hardened steel like those not this crap mild steel and a button head that the wrench barely fits properly come on creality get with the program stop using the button heads i don't care if they look good i want the machine to function good and i don't want to strip a bolt because you used a crap um, piece of hardware so switch over to all this kind of bolt nice hardened crown bolts instead of these stupid button head bolts you should only use the button heads where it's absolutely necessary or it's a low stress item like this where there's you're not cranking it down very tight so it doesn't matter beyond that i am so far impressed um if you want to print a super pretty high quality print you're going to want to use your ender 3 or your ender 5. if you want to print something two meters long without having to print it in 15 pieces this can do that <laughs> you guys have any questions ask down below i'll do the best i can to answer them i'm going to make some tutorial videos on how to work with this machine because it is different it's not a standard you know one two three xyz 90 degree perpendicular cartesian printer so there are some idiosyncrasies you have to be aware of when you configure and set this machine up but as you can see once you do it's not bad most of my complaints are with cura so I can't wait for Idea Maker to come out with their belt version. I'm super excited about that. Ask below if you have any questions. If you want to see something in specific, I can post a little T3D tip video for you to give you a close-up detail of something specific you may or may not want to see. Let me know. I will see you guys later.